Wait, who are you? The voices in my head told me to do it. I haven't eaten in four days. I feel so alone and I just can't deal with it anymore. Make sure you put that book back right where you got it. When hearing these sentences, they may not make a whole lot of sense and they might sound a little confusing. These statements are used to show the multiple kinds of mental illnesses there are and to show what you may hear if you know someone with a mental illness. 57.7 million people are affected by some type of mental illness each year, and so being aware of these disorders is very important because you never know when or how you could be affected. According to Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, mental illnesses are generally characterized by the deregulation of mood, thought, and or behavior. Another definition from medicine that defines it as the way a person thinks, feels, behaves, and or relates to his or her surroundings. Mental illnesses affect people's daily life functions, such as having healthy relationships, adapting to change, and being productive in school, work, or caregiving. Many people are embarrassed or ashamed when they are diagnosed with a mental illness. 43.6 million people, ages 18 or older, or 18.1% of the adult population, suffer with some type of mental illness, says the National Survey on Drug Use and Health. This picture is used to show the mental illness prevalence in the United States. As you can see, the highest amount of mental illness occurs in Oregon, Idaho, Utah, Colorado, and a couple more states. States that experience the least amount of mental illness include states like Alaska, North and South Dakota, and Pennsylvania. Nebraska actually ranks in the middle of all these states in the average of 4.40 to 4.70% of adults experiencing mental illness in Nebraska. There are hundreds of different types of mental illnesses. Mental illnesses vary immensely. A mental illness can be fairly mild and interfere only partially. This can be something like phobias. These illnesses can also be very extreme and they may require hospitalization. The severity of someone's mental illness can be categorized by if it's in full or partial remission, if the person experienced an episode once or multiple times, and how severe the symptoms of the mental illness is. As previously mentioned, there are hundreds of different types of mental illnesses. The five major categories of mental illnesses include anxiety disorders, mood disorders, psychotic disorders, eating disorders, and dementia. Anxiety disorders include things like panic disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, or OCD, post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD, and social phobia. Some symptoms that are related to anxiety disorders include things like panic attacks, physical symptoms such as pain, nausea, and headaches, nightmares, obsessive thoughts, and fear of leaving the house. Mood disorders are the most common mental illness in the entire world. These disorders are better known as depression and bipolar disorder. If someone you know is having mood changes that impacts their daily life every day, they may be experiencing symptoms that are related to depression. Bipolar disorder is defined as a brain disorder that causes changes in a person's mood, energy, and ability to function. Bipolar disorder has two different sides, manic and depressive episodes. <clears throat> a manic episode may consist of a person having lots of energy, trouble sleeping, being more physically active than normal, and making risky decisions. A depressive episode can have a person feeling sad, depressed, lonely, worried, tired, and they may have trouble concentrating and may consider suicide. Psychotic disorders are also just known as schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is a brain disorder marked by changes and disruption in cognitive and emotional health, says UPMC HealthBeat. It affects human functions, such as language, thought, and perception. Some symptoms that go along with schizophrenia include hearing voices, hallucinations, delusions, social withdrawal, incoherent speech, and abnormal reasoning. Another mental, main mental illness are eating disorders. According to the National Eating Disorders Association, some specific types of mental, or excuse me, some specific types of eating disorders are anorexia nervosa, which is self-starvation, bulimia nervosa, <clears throat> which is binge eating followed by purging, fasting, or excessive exercise, and binge eating disorder, which is uncontrolled eating without the use of laxatives or vomiting. Symptoms of eating disorders include things like reduction of food intake, 
overeating, feelings of depression or distress, concern of weight, body shape, or poor self-image. The last major type of mental illness is dementia. Dementia is a disruption of consciousness and changes in cognitive health, such as memory loss and decrease in motor skills. These can be illnesses like Alzheimer's, head trauma, HIV, Parkinson's, substance-induced dementia caused by drugs, alcohol abuse, inhalants, or exposure to toxins. <clears throat> a mental illness can affect any person of any age, gender, or race. Mental illnesses start with a combination of factors. These factors can be anything from genetics, biology, psychology, or someone's environment. Inheriting a mental illness genetically means that a family member or parent carried on that gene to you. Also, if one of your parents has a mental illness, that doesn't necessarily mean that you will be diagnosed with a mental illness too. If you inherit a mental illness, that is due to the fact that there were problems in multiple genes. Tragic events and interactions of genes can cause genetically inherited mental illnesses to become prevalent. If someone is diagnosed with a mental illness biologically, according to MedicineNet, it means there was some abnormal balance of brain chemicals. When these chemicals are out of balance, the messages may not make it all the way through the brain, thus leading to symptoms of mental illnesses. Defects or injury of the brain can also lead to a mental illness. Psychological trauma, such as child sufferings, like emotional, physical, or sexual abuse, early loss of a parent, or neglect can lead to a mental illness as well. Things in your environment can also progress into the development of a mental illness. These can be things like death of a family member, divorce, dysfunctional family life, and change of jobs or schools. If someone is at risk for developing a mental illness, substance abuse can trigger the disorder for that person. When treating a mental illness, it is approached similarly like treating a physical ailment. According to the National Alliance on Mental Health, <clears throat> adults in the United States with a serious mental illness die, on average, 25 years earlier due to not getting treatment for their mental illness. With that being said, getting treatment if you are diagnosed with a mental illness is extremely important. When treating anxiety disorders, doctors expose the patient to the obsession or object that makes them anxious, get the prescribed medications such as antidepressants, and they recommend counseling or therapy. Depression can be treated, but many individuals do not have access to treatment or do not take advantage of the services available. If the action, if this person doesn't take action to treat the disorder, it can become a chronic disease. Even experiencing just one case of depression can leave a person with a 50% higher risk of experiencing another episode. Depression and bipolar disorder are treated with medications such as antidepressants, visits with psychiatrists, psychologists, and mental health counselors, and taking part in interpersonal therapy. The psychotic disorder schizophrenia can be treated through medications, psychotherapy, mood stabilizers, psychosocial re interventions, behavioral therapies, rehabilitation, and mutual support groups. Eating disorders can be treated with psychotherapy, counseling, and meeting the medical and nutritional needs. They, these will tackle the psychological, biological, interpersonal, and cultural forces that cause the eating disorder. Treatments to help tackle dementia include medication, therapies such as occupational, music, pet, and massage, and ingesting different vitamins can also help in helping treat dementia. Unfortunately, mental illnesses cannot be prevented in any way. According to the Mayo Clinic, paying close attention to warning signs, receiving regular health care, getting help when needed, and just simply taking care of yourself can all help in preventing mental illnesses. When coping and dealing with a mental illness, Mental Health America says that one should accept his or her feelings, handle their behaviors appropriately, reach out to a support system, get counseling, and take time out for themselves. Mental illnesses are an extremely common matter in today's society. There are many hundreds of types of mental illnesses that vary immensely. With these varying mental illnesses, there are also dozens of symptoms that go along with these disorders. Mental illnesses can begin through genetics, through traumatic experience, or psychologically. Anybody can develop a mental illness, whether you're 18 years old, Hispanic, or a successful lawyer. Although mental disorders cannot be prevented in any way, there are many ways to get help and treat a mental illness, whether it's through therapy, medication, or counseling. 
If you or someone you know is diagnosed with a mental illness, the most important step is to reach out and get help. Break the stigma of mental illnesses and reach out for help. Mental illnesses aren't a choice, but getting help is.